What is up, Steve here? I hope you are doing well. We've got a special guest, Spencer from Real Estate Mindset. We're gonna talk all details of what's going on in the housing market. You do not wanna miss this, and let's get started right meow. Travis, what is up, man? How are you? I'm well, Steve. How are you, brother? Good, good. I recently did a live stream the other day and uh, asked about... Um, you know, who, who do you guys watch that talks about real estate related topics or macroeconomics? And I got a lot of good feedback and your name came up multiple, multiple times. And I figured it was about time that you and I got on the tube together and talk real estate. So what, what's going on, man? Good, good to have you here. Dude, you know, Steve, I, you know, I, you already know, man, you know, I made a video of my top, my personal top 10 favorite, you know, real estate YouTubers, obviously you're on that list, man. I am very flattered to be here. I have always looked up to you, man. Even before I was doing YouTube videos, I was watching your stuff. I absolutely love your style, man. But what I really love about what you're doing, Steve, is the type of value that you're bringing to the table. I wish more and more people actually listen to you because it's, dude, it's pure fire, man. And, and you know, I, I, I think that you have two things. You have you know, you're an industry professional, so you have decades of experience, but plus you also went through turmoil yourself. So when you go through that turmoil, Steve, I mean, you have, you have a different level of understanding, man. And that's part of the reason why I love you. And man, I'm, I'm humbled to be here today. Well, we, we appreciate you being on today and Travis. So for, for everybody who doesn't know, Travis has his own YouTube channel. It's growing like crazy. It's real estate mindset. Um, if you're not a subscriber, go over there, check out his channel. He's got a wealth of information. He posts consistently as well. And I think that's, that's important. And, um, you know, before we kind of get into it and, you know, we were talking in terms of having some turmoil back in the last real estate recession and you went through some, some trying times as well. Can you enlighten us maybe on that as well as your experience and what you're doing in, in today's day in, in the real estate industry? Yeah, man. So, you know, it's, it's always hard to talk about, you know, the painful past, right. But, you know, I, I really feel like it's very valid in the current market that we have right now, you know, long story short, Steve, the reason why I'm sounding the alarm is because I've already seen this show before. And a lot of people don't realize that it's much worse to purchase an overvalued house than it is to have a higher interest rate. So I'm constantly preaching to people. I, I, I want a 10%. You give me a 10% rate. I'm cool with that because odds are the values are going to plummet. It's way smarter way smarter to have a higher interest rate because you have the possibility as long as you qualify LTV and equity is important, but you have the possibility to refinance and you have the possibility to do something wonderful called sell. <laughs> you can't sell your house if you're trapped in it upside down. So what happened to me in 2008, you know, it felt like I lost $380,000 in equity. So I lost $380,000 in equity and it felt overnight, man. So I lost all this money in equity, but I was also in mortgage. So back in 08 and 09, as you know, you, all, the mortgage companies got completely gutted. So I lost my job. As a result, I can no longer afford my mortgage payment, which was $5,000 a month, counting tax and insurance is completely stupid. I was 22 years old. Why did I even have that house? Right. That's stupid. So, you know, lost my job. I could no longer afford my mortgage payment. I could not sell. I couldn't sell my, I tried to short sell. I tried all these things. I could not sell and I could not refinance because I was upside down hundreds of thousands of dollars. Essentially what that led to was a foreclosure. Let me explain the problem with the foreclosure. Cause I went through this, my credit. So the, everyone realizes your credit's going to be messed up. So my credit's been messed up. It was messed up. It's it, by the way, it's exceptional now, right? I have exceptional credit that I earned and it's never going to be bad again. I'm never going to get it. But not only was my credit messed up for seven to 10 years, people don't understand that a deficiency notice will also be sent, which means if they can't sell the house for what you owe, they're going to, they're going to act like that's your income. So my lender that, that foreclosed on my house, uh, sent me a 1099 for $180,000. So when the IRS got that, they're like, all right, Travis, you, you owe us 120. I was like, how do I owe you 120? I, I lost everything. I lost. So dude, so, you know, not only were my credits trash, the IRS was after me for 13, almost 13 years. I went bankrupt. So it extended the statute of limitations. 
when all is said and done, man, I had to sit back and watch everyone else find homes for pennies on the dollar while I was there wallowing yep. in my bad decisions. So that's what happened to me in 2008, brother. And that is why <laughs> Travis and myself really have our YouTube channels is we, we are trying to sound the alarms and not, not necessarily the FOMO or anything like that, but we just want to just put out our experiences and, and kind of like tell you what we're seeing in the markets based on data and research that we're doing on our own. But Travis question for you leading up to that, did you ever think the real estate values would go to where they went? Dude, I mean, ugh. so <laughs> keep in mind, this was like a de over a decade ago. Okay. I was a different, I was a punk kid. All right. I, I was raised right. I was raised right. I got caught in the rat race. I got to be honest, man. You know, and I look back at that. I was a fool. I was a fool in my head. I was so caught up in my life. I was so caught up in the rat race. I was so caught up with my bills because I was in Southern California. I was making $40,000 by the age of 21. Right. So I was so caught up, brother. I, I, I didn't see it coming. Right. I, I didn't, I didn't think it would happen to me. Right. It's not going to happen to me or I'm just going to make enough money. I'm going to continue to make the same amount of money. And, um, you know, and I was not prepared and I, I did not think they would go down, uh, like they were, but not because the data wasn't out. It was because I chose not to, to investigate it. You know, I chose not to study it because I, I was caught up in life, bro. So, and I remember, I remember to this day, I remember there's all these whispers, oh, the housing market is going to crash. The housing market is going to crash, but I never stopped like an adult and I never reflected. And, um, you know, I'm worried that that's happening right now as well. And look, you know, I was in the real estate market at the time. I was a real estate agent, actually a real estate broker. I had my own real estate company and I too bought one property specifically at a really high price and, and had big overhead with it and ended up short selling the property. And uh, unfortunately, yeah, it set me back, but I'll tell you, I picked up that property for $290,000. We short sold it for $87,000. Now, if you, you know, six months, eight, you know, a year before, if you told me that values would have gone to that point, I, I literally would have been like, you're, you're completely nuts. And uh, unfortunately, based on the data that we're looking at today, and, and hopefully we can discuss it if you have the time in terms of defaults, mortgage defaults, yes, uh, and, and where things are headed, um, you know, do you think that we'll start to see property values take that big of a hit again? Uh, so this is, okay. So I had to really reflect, do I think this is going to be worse in 2008? And I, you have to understand, Steve, that I am biased because I lost everything. So to me, like nothing can be worse than 2008. Right. So it's hard for me to kind of take a step back because, you know, I lost hundred percent, right. It wasn't the national average was 19%. So when I look at the national average, that's how I decide, is this bubble going to be worse on a national average? So the fact that we had one of the worst foreclosure crises and financial crises in 2008, but the average national average equity dropped 19%. Dang, right? Like the damage of 19%. So it's hard for me. Um, you know, uh, here, here's my answer, man. And I'm sorry for going around the bush here. It's, it's a hard answer. It's a hard, it's a hard question. Um, I'm starting to think every single day that goes by and every you know, new set of data uh, that's coming out, I, it's just so fast. You know, I thought that the housing market would crumble apart. I knew that it was artificially in inflated in less than two years. We've never seen that. I knew it would fall down, you know, and, and come crashing down. But I, I, even me, I didn't expect it to ha you know, happen so quick, man. I mean, this is happening so quickly. And now I'm starting to think. And I'm, let me explain why. I, I'm starting to think. I, I'm not going to say 100%. I'm like 50, like 55%, right? 55%. I think it will be worse in 2008. And the, and the biggest reason is we didn't have inflation back then. And back then the Federal Reserve could come to our rescue by doing quantitative easing, the lowering of the federal funds rate. And I will make the argument that the reason we're in this housing market bubble is because of quantitative easing, lowering the federal funds rate. So now that that option is out, I'm worried, bro. I'm worried. And, and, and not only Hands that- down. 
so, so we're like helpless now, right? So not only are we helpless, but we have to understand how the bubble happened. And the fact that we had such record breaking equity growth in less than two years, I'm worried that we're going to lose all that. I, I still, I can't admit, I, I still don't know that I, I, I can't say that we'll be back down to pre pandemic levels. I, I can't say that because we're, that would be a, a, a national average, like 40% drop. If it, if it goes down to pre-pandemic level, Steve, we are in so much worse shape than, than, you know, than I think so many people imagine. Now, you know, here's the thing. So I, I, I'm starting to think it is going to be worse. Okay. But that doesn't mean we can't prepare. If I would have prepared in 2008, cause I had resources, intelligence, I had credit. If I would have just stopped and slowed down and prepared, I could have been a winner on the other side of things, but I didn't. And I, you just hit on the, the most important word. And I think that's pretty much I, the strategy for both the, our, both of our channels is we just want people to prepare for a bad day. And I think we both can agree that we, uh, we see it coming. I think it's not about if, I think it's about when. And we just, again, we're not trying to like put fear out there, whatever the case is, but let's say nothing happens and real estate just yeah. flattens out. Ew, who cares? Like you prepared, you got your credit better. You got more money in your pocket. You got rid of that yes. boat payment. You got rid of that car payment. You did be things better financially for you and your family. So it's not going to hurt anything. And obviously we're not financial advisors, yeah. but something, something you just touched on in terms of um, how quickly things are happening. And, um, you know, the, the report came out in terms of the amount of cancel real estate transactions, oh, yeah. cancellations yep. it, it last month. And I talk about the Florida markets, the top 10 metros, yeah. six of them, the, the highest cancellation rates, six of them were in Florida. Yep. Yep. And that was between 25 to 30 percent cancellation rate. Insane. Insane. It, that those are significant numbers. So I think that um, when we're when Travis and I are looking at data, it's really hard to look at data because it's always lagging. Yeah. And the data that we can look at a lot of times that's more fresh are those cancellation rates. It's the new inventory coming on market. It's the inventory back on market and price reductions. Um, what, as a, as a loan officer, what are you, what are you seeing in the mortgage market and where, where do you think it's going to go, especially with the fed feds talking, what another point, uh, one and a half, maybe 125 basis points. Dude. Um, do you, do you think mortgage rates are going to follow and, and, and get significantly higher or what, what's your take? Well, here's the thing, man. So talk, talking about the interest rates first. I mean, the, the minute that we had the, you know, um, the, what was it that came out? The job numbers came out, right? So when this week, when the job numbers came out and it beat somehow beat expectations, and that may be because there's too many businesses versus employees, right? People don't, you know, I watched our reventure consulting. He had a video dude, and I loved how he got into that. And it's true. Remember all those PPP loans? And I'm yep. not talking about prepayment penalty. You remember <laughs> prepayment? You remember that PPP yeah. prepayment? No, I'm talking about payroll protection program. And there's so many businesses. The job market appears to be solid. So I think that's going to signal to the Federal Reserve, oh, we're in super strong shape. And then this morning, CPI came out at, oh my gosh, 9.1%. To me, that's all the green lights that the Federal Reserve needed to see to go addition to it, to tighten additional, right. To take additional tightening measures. So I believe it's going to be a hundred basis point increase. And I absolutely, you know, I feel like that's going to, because the federal funds rate is not residential mortgage rates, right? There's other factors, mortgage backed securities, a 10 year treasury. I have no doubt that residential mortgage rates are going to go up. I look, I tend to look at the 10 year treasury right now as an indication of where they're trending and I actually pre predicted that, you know, every Thursday, uh, Fred comes out with their updated national average 30 year fixed rate mortgage. So last week is at 5.3%. And when I did that video, I was like, you guys, but the 10 years, you know, mess, you know, is going up and down here. I believe that this week is going to be 5.5%. Guess what it was? It was 5.51. I was off by one basis point, right? So I'm getting lucky. But my point is, is that 10 year? That 10 year, if you really watch that treasury, I mean, it's going to show you the direction. I think it's going to go up this year, Steve. I think it's possible. 
if this runaway inflation keeps keeps going the way it is, I think it's possible we touch seven. It was really hard for me to see that in January because seven is high in today's values, right? Yeah. I think it's possible that that we touch seven percent for the first time in a long time. What do you? Yeah, I agree. I th I think they're going to go up, and and uh, I don't think that the Fed is going to do any more quantitative easing. Hopefully, they don't. Hopefully, yeah. It'll it'll turn badly, maybe hyperinflation. And um, what 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 about you know I'm and I see it all the time coming into my uh, my email and and Travis and I talked before on a on another video and I I gotta I gotta commend you for this. And as a loan officer, you get paid when you actually get people into a home and and. Um, you know, create that loan for somebody. And he said to me, which I think is very important based on uh, Travis's character that you, you know, he, he's just, he's standoffish of getting people into loans right now. I'm going to go ahead and assume you're not getting many people into adjustable rate mortgages. And what's your take on those? So, um, yeah, man. So I, I, I've taken, I've kind of stepped out of origination. That's on my realtor career too. I have a license. I'm, you know, I've done, I practice real estate, both as a loan officer and realtor. I mean, when I don't believe in something, man, I can't do it. I can't. So that's why I'm, I'm really, thank God for YouTube. Thank God I can get this message out. Now, as far as adjustable rate mortgages or arms, I think it's foolish. I don't think you should do that. I don't think people are set up to to gamble that way. Why, you know, in my eyes, if you're, you're not going to, why would you gamble with your house? Go play the horses, go play the dogs, go get a scratch ticket, but don't gamble at your house because you don't know if, if your, if your payment's going to go up. Right. But, so, but, I, but here, but here, but, here's the pushback, Travis, you in three years or five years, when it balloons, you could just refinance. The thing is, man, and I've heard that and whoever's like, if there are loan officers and realtors saying that you could just like, you have the possibility. Okay. The thing is if house value goes upside down and you no longer have equity, you can't refinance because there's something called loan to value. There's LTV or loan to value perimeters. And if you're upside down, you no longer qualify to refinance. Now that means that everyone that's buying right now, right? Oh, you can just refinance. No, you can't. How are you going to refinance if your house goes upside down? It doesn't work that way. So, um, man, I think there's a lot of bad stuff going on out there. I don't believe in arms. I understand how you can save money. And I understand a lot of people save money actually in 08 and 09. People don't realize that. People are like, oh, their arms adjusted and, and people got kicked out. The reality is, is most people that had arms back then, their payments went down. People don't get it. So, but again, bro, like treat your house like a house. Pay it off early. Yeah, you know, pay it off early if you're worried about the interest you're paying. You remember uh, negative amortization loans back then, too. <laughs> I do remember the the payment option. Yeah, I remember yeah. the payment option or twelve mat. Yeah, I remember those. So ba bank basically, if you're not if you're not familiar with them, this is this is how uh, lax the the mortgage <laughs> market was back then. I'll just keep it that way. But basically, it was kind of like a credit card where you could pay your minimum payment, but all the interest that you're supposed to be paying on that loan you didn't pay it because yeah. your minimum payment was so low. And then that money gets tacked on to your yeah. loan and to your total principal balance. And then it becomes compounding interest for the lender and people became even more severely upside down. So adjustable rate mortgages just steer clear of them. Um, you have been uh, talking about black Knight's stats on the defaults for mm -hmm. foreclosures. Mm -hmm. um, what are you seeing and what, what could you, uh, what, what do you, what do you think is going to happen in terms of uh, the defaults and, and foreclosures? Are they going to ramp up? Are they ramping up? Are we going to see a wave of foreclosures? What, what's your take? Well, well, so far, Steve, my take is it's, it's you know, and I, I talked to Scott Walters about this as well a little bit, but my take, I mean, it's a little soon. Right. It's a little soon because the reality is, is people no, absolutely zero people should be going into foreclosures right now, because if you get to that point, sell your house, just sell your house. Right. So as far as the data, Steve, you know, I think the data right now is not reflecting the true story. I think it's completely tainted. You know, when you have year over year comparisons, but you're comparing it to data when we had, you know, a ban against foreclosures, that's not accurate. Right. Yep. That's not accurate. Uh, so I, I think it's really difficult to see, 
you know, what's going on with foreclosures. That's why I, I personally hang on to serious delinquency rates. And right now the serious delinquency rate is 45% of, as of May, it may be higher now because it's just lagging data, but as of May, it's above pre-pandemic levels by 45%. And what that tells me is like, that's the real data, right? Foreclosures about people can't afford their payment, right? So serious delinquencies tell me that people can't afford their payment. So then the question is, is things, are things going to get cheaper and easier as we go through 2022 or are things going to get tighter and harder as we go into 2022? So in my eyes, you know, the data is completely skilled. It, you know, it, it, people can go any direction they want, depending on their bias. But if you're looking at the serious delinquency rate, you're going to notice that we are in a default bubble. So we have a default bubble right now. And the more debt people get in, the more people are losing their savings. Like, and you know, people are, you know, the savings rate in America is plummeting. The debt is increasing. All of that stuff, you know, it's just going to pile on and pile on. But the second, Steve, and I think we're already there. I think we're at the plateau and heading down. But the second that people realize, and, and it's evident that housing values are going down, that's when the foreclosure wave starts. Because now people can no longer sell their house. And I think that starts possibly, you know, you know, I thought about this cause it lags. It's a process, right? It could be a long process. I think that happens in, in uh, 2023, um, possibly the first or second quarter of 2023. Yeah. And, and Travis and I spoke about this on, on his channel as well. Uh, make sure you go over and take a look at that video too, if you guys wouldn't mind and check out uh, Travis's channel. But, you know, we, we were talking about the, the logic so like right now people understand or they should understand, look, if you're not making your mortgage payment, odds are you have equity in your home um, and you could sell it. But, uh, you know, Travis and I were talking, we're like the last real estate recession told us otherwise. And what it really tell us, it was, you know, people, they, they, um, they didn't prepare. And also they just thought that they would, be able to work through the yeah. situation. They yeah. would be able to get back up on their feet. They would be able to get back to paying their mortgage. They would be able to uh, get another job. And unfortunately it just didn't happen for many. No. And I mean, I, I think the, the logic just kind of goes out the window and um, what, what's your take? So we had, um, what was it at the peak, like eight and a half percent of mortgages were going through the mortgage forbearance. Um, in terms of modifications and, and what people, cause now we're down to like less than a percent. Um, what's your take on a lot of the people that were able to get modifications, um, during that process? Do you think that we're going to see more default from them or, um, what, what's your take? All right, so, so talking about like the modifications back in like Oh nine, to, no, that present day. Oh, right now? Because because yeah. and I think you would agree, you know, modifications back in 08, 09 was complete joke. I mean, yeah. the, the lenders were completely unprepared, right? It was so slow. You had to tell people to stop paying their mortgage. And, and that's why I couldn't personally do loan modification. I can't tell someone to stop paying their mortgage and, 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 and cross your fingers that they accept your modification. And, and if they don't, now you're stuck in foreclosure and you're stuck with horrible credit. I can't do that. So what I see happening right now is, is, is we, we don't know, you know, I, I, I've heard a lot of, you know, information and reviewed some data where a lot of the loan modifications are now increasing the amortization. So yeah. they're going from 30 years to 40 years, which makes it, it drops their payment. So, you know, I th honestly see, I think that they're better prepared for loan modifications because they learned the hard way back in 08 and 09. And it was a catastrophe, by the way, it was, it, it was a complete joke. So, um, you know, I, I think that they're doing it now. Um, you know, they're already went through that foreclosure ban. Um, to be honest with you, I don't see it. It once that mod, I, I think there will be modifications, right? I don't think it's going to be the level of, you know, last time, but if it is that level, I, th I believe that the lenders will be better prepared to, to handle loan modifications because of, because all the past experience, you know, and a loan modification is better than a short sell and foreclosure and a short sell is better than a foreclosure. So, you know, what, what I tell people, Steve, regardless of modification is if you're struggling right now, right? If you're struggling right now, probably things are just going to get worse. If you're struggling to make your mortgage payment, sell and sell and, and not with me, I don't, I'm not selling houses right now. So I'm not trying to get leads by saying this, right? So 
people taking the wrong way. But I'm saying things are going to get worse. Savings is already getting destroyed. People are overwhelmed in debt. Sell your house while you can, because this time next year, you may be upside down 20%. I, I think that's a great point. Um, I got, uh, I don't know if the video are already launched by the time this comes out. Um, so I got an email. It was a Pulte. It's a community. Uh -huh. It's got Pulte and Lennar in the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got an email and it said, I mean, Mark, my answer said, uh, price reduction, 60 to a hundred thousand mm dollars. -hmm. And, uh, I've been, I've been talking about new construction and mm -hmm. how builders are going to start, uh, getting the squeeze. And then, um, they're going to start offering incentives. They're going to offer incentives to real estate agents to bring buyers there. They're going to offer incentives to mortgages, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, I had some comments cause I said, and then eventually they're going to drop prices. And some people were like, no way they're going to, they're no way going to drop prices. I'm like, okay, you know, we'll see. Right. Anyway, like two days later, I get this email and sure enough, Pulte drops prices 60 to a hundred thousand dollars on, you know, it's just one community. And, you know, I, I think it was like five or six homes that they dropped price on, but that that's significant. I'm, I knew they were going to drop price, but I was like, man, I maybe 10 grand, maybe 25 grand. So we're, we're starting to uh, see the turmoil for new construction. Um, what do you, what do you have to say about the, um, when people are like, you know, we just have a big lack of inventory because I, <laughs> I hear it all the time. And I think that's the main defense for the housing market in general is we don't have any inventory. Yeah. What, what do you say about that to, to anybody that's listening right now? Well, the first thing I'll say, Steve, is yes, inventory is really important. Okay. But it's only one thing. So let, you know, let me explain and, and real quick about those new home builders, man. I got that same thing. And, you know, I even had new home builders, all this hate, like, no, we have so much migration. We have so much migration. They're never, dude, I just got done uh, doing my notes for an update video. I found four new home builds that lowered their prices from 50 to $20,000 yesterday. Wow. Right. This is happening. I mean, we're, we're not bad people. I think anyways. So the question was, what do I, what do I see happening with new home builds? Is that right? No. Uh, live, well, it can be new, new construction as well, but the lack of inventory is what's oh going to keep gosh. the housing market propped up. I got too many children. I'm so sorry. So, um, <laughs> here's the thing, man. Um, for me, I mean, this, this debate is now easy for me to explain you, you know, first of all, in my opinion and in other people's opinions as well, we're not in this housing market bubble because we're in a bubble, right? I'm not talking about how we got here. We're in a bubble, excessive equity growth. It's breaking fundamentals. We're in a bubble. We did not get in this bubble because of inventory. We got in this bubble because of demand, because the federal reserve, dropped interest rates, right? Not only did they drop interest rates, lowering mortgage payments, lowering debt to income ratio for qualifying for loans, the Federal Reserve also gave people their down payment in the form of stimulus. So the Federal Reserve opened the floodgates of demand. And when you do that, obviously it's going to break, right? It's going to break when, when you go half the interest rates, you're giving people down payments. It doesn't matter how much supply you have. The demand is too hot. Right. So I think we're in this market from excessive, overwhelming demand, uh, Steve. And I and I also think that's why you're seeing such a quick and powerful impact from the rising of interest rates. If this was a supply market, the market wouldn't be unraveling right now from from raising the interest rates. to They're, they're under six. The average is still under six, dude. We can't even handle pre pandemic interest rates. Do you see what I'm saying? So to me, it's clear the supply is important, but that's a long-term problem. I think that we need more supply and more building for our long-term problems, but this immediate problem right now, it's demand, brother. And so the people that are making that argument, you know, I think, a, you know, I think they're making that argument because most professionals made that same argument and it's really corroded normal Americans now. Cause even my friends that are, you know, you know, believe the same beliefs as me. They're like, cause I asked them like, do you get, what do you guys think? They're like, Oh, there's not enough inventory. I'm like, you don't listen to my YouTube. I never give my YouTube videos <laughs> to my friends, but 
because that's not why I'm making them. Right. So, um, to me, it's clear as day, man. You know, it, it's it's a it's not a supply thing. We we need it, but th this problem is because of demand, and that's why you're seeing, when the Federal Reserve turns off demand, that's why you see these changes happening so quickly. I think it's lame. I think people that are saying that, especially if they're realtors, I think that um, you know some of them are just greedy, right? But I I also think that some of them just don't understand, right? Because this is something we've never been through before. So I don't want to say they're evil. But I, you know, I, I think it's really bad advice, man. You know, and, yeah. and that's what I'm always saying. If you're a professional, because I, I talk to a lot of realtors, I train them, I educate them. I'm like, hey, you know, in their minds, like they can't say anything bad, right? They can't say this is the wrong time to buy. And I'm telling them, like, you're absolutely out of your mind. You have a duty to at least warn people. If you don't believe it, fine, but warn them of that possibility. And they refuse to. And it's a, you know, it's a huge problem. And I try to explain to them, like, you know, as a realtor, people will trust you if you're just honest. People yeah. are sick of this crap. People are sick of the used car salesman crap. People are only talking about sunshine and rainbows and unicorns. People want to know, is it safe for me to buy? If it's not, why? If it is, why? It's a total, it's a, it's a total breakdown in our industry. I think it's completely disgusting. And, you know, you, you said the two words, bad advice. Um, and it really was not long ago when I was taking, picking apart videos, CNBC or whatever the case is, uh, Century 21 CEO, Coal Banker CEO, uh, Barbara Corcoran, Dave Ramsey, all these cats, they're, they're talking the velocity of real estate, go out and buy. It's a great time to buy. And I'm, I'm like, wow, you know, you, you want to talk about like, I get it. Like you, you got a bottom line figures that you got to do for business, whatever the case is. But you know, the, the number one thing in terms of like you guys making money, but you're really not protecting the consumer and giving that solid sound advice or both sides of that, advice, you know, advice sector in terms of, you know, pros and cons of buying right now. I mean, it, it was just sad. And that's what, that's why I was so pissed off, man. I was, I was livid yeah. listening to these yahoos yeah. freaking spit this game of right now is the best time to buy. And then Dave, Dave Ramsey, I'm like, ah, dude, know? he's horrible, man. And he's got all the ELPs, you know, he's got mortgage brokers, he's got real estate agents, got insurance guys. So yeah, that if people are not buying real estate, that's going to affect their bottom line. And that, <laughs> that's the message he's putting out there. Now, you know, what? he could be, they all could be right yeah. if, if, and I don't think it's going to happen, if they the reverse. Fed starts buying mortgage-backed securities again, they, reverse. Yeah. They, they start throwing a bunch of stimmy checks back into the market, Yes, and and the Fed keeps the rate down to zero, but what's that going to do? We're gonna I mean, see, we'll see so hyperinflation at that time. And that's also unnatural. You know, like, like, how can you really advise on something that's unnatural? I mean, so... It's just shallow, Steve. I mean, it's yeah. it's a show. I mean, I get it, man. You know, this is something that you know we've never seen before. I mean, we're in a recession, and unemployment rate is only three point six. Like pe people have never, seen, and I think that's because there's too many em em employers. But you know, like, because because I you know I've listened to real estate YouTubers for a while, and you know, there's some people that I you know I used to listen to all the time, and you know, I listen to their channels now, and it's like, man, like, like I, I feel like they're doing such a disservice to people, whether they do it on purpose. I, I feel like maybe some of them, Steve, maybe they're not doing it on purpose. Maybe they really feel that way. Maybe they're, but I, I think they're holding on to one set of data by a slate. And because it's this one set of data says this, I'm going to have all of my opinions kind of conclude this way. Right. But I think the reality is like, it took me a while for me to understand that this was because of demand, not supply. Right. It's constant analyzing data, but not only analyzing the data, what's really important is analyzing the trends of the data. And then also understanding like year over year comparisons and, and, and you know, just realtors aren't the same as what they used to be, man. I, th I think it's yeah. bad. Um, yeah. And that, that, that's the whole thing is get, get multiple opinions, watch multiple people. Um, you, you were talking about the job market and you said too many employers. Yeah. Um, this is very, very important. What Travis just said, and I've been saying it as well. And I said, be careful, especially if you're taking mass amounts of debt, be careful uh, of really having a comfort level with your employer because um, we're as the Fed keeps increasing rates, 
the companies that rely on short-term debt and low interest rates, and a lot of them are going to be insolvent and a lot of them are going to be in trouble and there's going to be mass layoffs. We're seeing layoffs obviously in the mortgage markets, yeah. Yeah. but I think we're going to see a lot more yep. layoffs and the, the healthy job market that we're seeing right now, yeah. Yeah. I think is going to fall as quickly yeah. as, as, as we're, we're yeah. seeing everything else drop um, yes. in terms of like, every other bubble out there. Um, I think that that's a, a very important thing that you just said, because I, I think people are comfortable, they're confident in yeah. their, wh where they work and everything else. But, uh, and I, I honestly, I don't think there's going to be, I think that the government is going to cherry pick who they're going to bail out. Um, but they're not going to have money like they did back in 08 in terms of bailing people out. It's just, it's not going to be a reality, I mean, uh, not people, but, but corporations. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate your time today. As mentioned, if you guys want to see Travis and I talk again, maybe even mention something you guys want to hear us talk about, be sure to comment in the section below. And uh, Travis, man, thanks a lot. Always, always good talking to you, man. Pleasure, brother. Absolute pleasure.